Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we talk about another Italian sword, or to be more precise, since we're always talking about pre-unification Italy, we're talking about a papal sword. And specifically, this is a model 1847 uh, Civic Guard sword. So, well, first of all, what is the... Well, first of all, let's talk about the papal state. So, unlike what we see today with the Holy See, which is a very small city-state confined within Rome, um, in the 19th century, the um, papal state was still occupied quite a considerable chunk of Italian territory. So, most of uh, central Italy, you could say, moving up towards the Adriatic coast around the Emilia-Romagna area. So, the Pope was actually both a spiritual leader, but also a secular, like a head of state. And the state had an army. Um, the papal army had been declining over the course of the 18th century, both in terms of uh, performance, but even in terms of, num of actual numbers. Um, and it uh, performed really poorly, uh, for example, in the Spanish War of, Su of Succession. Um, so, I suppose to integrate this uh, very bare-bones army, uh, a sort of militia was created, which was called the C Civic Guard. Uh, this kind of mimicked or was built in, uh, inspired by the national, the French National Guard, and it. Um, it was more or less a mandatory militia to an extent. So, uh, for instance, all property owners or business owners within the Papal State were um, by default part of the Civic Guard. And the functions of the Civic Guard were both uh, a sort of police, you could say. So they were in charge of ensuring um, orderly conduct within the state. Um, but they could also be assigned, attached to uh, military units if need be. So, more or less a militia. Um, this sword is part of the official um, equipment of the um, Papal Civic Guard. By the way, um, the regulations both for armament and uh, uniform and for the, the um, all kinds of regulations for the Civic Guard uh, came out around 1847 at the time of the issuing of this sword and they are available to read. So if there's any interest in, in this topic, I can kind of um, make a video going into more detail about the regulations and, yeah, and the Civic Guard rather than its weapons. So um, it's a very interesting sword. It has this very unusual and very recognizable pommel or end of the hilt area. It is also a very long sword and it is also a quite heavy sword. So this uh, comes in at almost a kilo. So it's even heavier than the Albertina we saw in a previous video. The difference being for this one that it is more uh, hilt heavy. So actually, even though it's heavier than the Albertina, it feels more nimble in the hand. It's, its blade is way more controllable. It's still not to say that this is a uh, easy to wield weapon, especially because of these uh, wings that kind of turn in into the hilt and eat up a little bit of the space you will use for the hand. So <clears throat> it's not the end of the world. It doesn't hurt or press into your fingers, but I can only imagine that during uh, combat, hypothetically, this might be a little bit annoying. So it's a very interesting sword too, uh, just because of its unique design. So let's dive into its details and see it close up. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the model 1847. Um, we'll start from the um, hilt area because that is the most uh, recognizable and unique feature of this sword. So the first thing we see is the pommel area, which is, you'll see that the back strap evolves into a lion's head, bent inwards, and then the uh, knuckle guard develops into these wings that bend in into the actual hilt area and kind of cover the lion's head. So the lion is in between these wings with actually a uh, screw going through. Unlike the Albertina, this is not a 
uh, screw that holds everything together. The blade is actually pinned at the end. You can see here, and actually, what's interesting is that it's, uh, there's a sort of um, retainer wedge here. A, you'll see that it's not just pinned into the handle, but it's pinned into this circular, um, I don't know how to call it, retainer, which in this case, was when it was pinned, it was uh, kind of crooked, because normally these, these lines would be uh, consistent with the main of the line. Um, other things to notice are the decorations on these wings. And then we move into the decoration on the knuckle guard. I especially like this, um, this pointy texture. And when we get to the shell guard, we'll see that this one is completely plain. This is by regulation, actually. So superior officers and higher ranking officers had a ornate shell guard too, uh, whereas NCOs uh, had a plain guard. Now, in terms of guard, although this uh, model is heavily regulated and described in, um, in the re re regulation documents, um, this shell guard with this very simple shape is the only one I've seen of this kind. Normally they have, they're a little bit um, um, hourglass shaped here, so they kind of recess a little. And most of the, even the most simple ones have a decorated line uh, engraved that runs around the uh, edge of the shell guard. So this is just something to notice about this sword specifically. Another thing to notice is that by regulation, these swords should have proof marks or official marks, uh, but this one has none. Um, I suppose this has to do with the um, taste of the time, whereby officers in Italy at the time uh, or on the Italian peninsula generally liked to uh, customize their weapons. So that might be why maybe the blade is aftermarket and perhaps the hilt and guard was designed that way too. Although again, by regulation, all weapons were property of the state. So I don't know what to make of that. If we look at the blade, well, we'll look at the structure of the blade first. Uh, we see there's a small ricasso here. And a rather deep fuller, I don't know if that uh, translates in images, but it is quite deep because the blade is actually quite thick at the, at the forte here. And this fuller continues all the way down to possibly the last quarter of the blade, I would say, where if you remember our Albertina from a few videos ago, it kind of evolves in the same shape, so it develops into two fullers with a uh, middle ridge that protrudes. But unlike the Albertina, this is more, it's, it's a thinner, uh, it's a more delicate blade overall. It's not as uh, heavily tip heavy as the Albertina, and this doesn't give the same almost arm piercing, armor piercing vibe that the Albertina gives. But it's, Functionally, in terms of design, it's the same kind of blade. Um, one interesting thing about this kind of sword is the decoration on it. So I hope we'll be able to see something here. But you can see under the uh, pitting, there are remains of decoration even on the spine. There we go. Let's see the other side. I hope this is coming through on camera. Uh, here we have a Solingen maker's mark. So it's a German blade. And if we move up, we have floral decoration and barely visible, maybe you can see here, a Viva l'Italia. So um, a patriotic motto, long live Italy. More decorations moving forward here. I cannot make out what it says on this, what's written here. Oh, sorry, let me focus. 
And on the other side, which is actually very common, instead of Viva l'Italia, we have a, let me see if I find it here, a Viva Pio Nono, which would be Viva Pius the Ninth, so the Pope at the time. And the reason for this apparent contradiction between models, so obviously it is a little bit weird that a model would be um, uh, celebrating the head of the papal state, but also unified Italy, is that uh, Pope Pius at the time, initially before 1848, was actually a, um, on a quite a great reformist uh, streak. So a lot of people saw him as the potential leader of a unified Italy um, against the Austrian power at the time. So that kind of explains this discrepancy in the models. And you'll find them in all kinds of variations. Sometimes they're etched, sometimes they're engraved, sometimes they're uh, blued or gilded. So there's, a, as for the Albertina, there's a whole variety of um, a wealth of different kinds of blades. Um, in terms of uh, stats for this blade, uh, let me quickly reference some numbers. So it's, as I mentioned, it's a very heavy sword. It's 947 grams, so almost a kilo. Uh, it's one meter long in total, and its blade is uh, 886 centimeters. So it is a very long sword and a very heavy sword. But interestingly enough, you don't feel that. I uh, would have bet money on the Albertina being heavier than this one, and that is not the case. So as usual, I hope this video was interesting. I find this to be a rather beautiful sword, and uh, I hope you do too. Um, if you have any questions, if you want to know anything more within my knowledge about the sword or the Papal Civic Guard, just let me know. Uh, if not, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.